The Academy Awards this year have gotten plenty of press already. The debacle started when Kevin Hart posted an incredibly happy tweet announcing that he was the host and how quickly it all went downhill from there. It looks like this will be the first year without a host, which I imagine could only help the time issue they always have. I could write an entire article on that perplexing event alone and not even mention the nominations this year. And since we're talking about nominations and things that are perplexing, let's talk about that Best Picture nomination for Bohemian Rhapsody. Sure, it's an entertaining enough movie, and Robbie Malik did an amazing job. His nomination is well deserved. The recreation of their Live Aid performance was impressive as well. Sound mixing is again a well deserved nomination, but Best Picture? This movie essentially edited the events of Queen's history to fit by the numbers music biopic, and it feels like it. Bohemian Rhapsody isn't the only music biopic in the race this year. Green Book tells the story of Don Shirley's tour throughout the Jim Crow South with his driver, Tony Val Longa. Although the music here is largely just background and rarely given center stage, the film has come under some heavy fire of late. The movie is based upon Nick Val Longa's story that he says is as accurate as he could make it, claiming that was what his father and Shirley told him. Reportedly, Shirley even made him swear to not publish the story until after his death. The Shirley family says the whole thing is largely fictionalized. I do not know the truth. All I know is Green Book was an enjoyable movie about two men becoming good friends. It feels genuine, and when you're telling the story, that sometimes matters more than the truth. Since we're on the biopic trend, let's look at Black Klansman, a movie I literally would have liked a lot more if I had left two minutes earlier. This is one of Spike Lee's best films. He's really learned how to distill his message through a story, rather than just blurting it out and rubbing it in the audience's face. That is, until the aforementioned last couple minutes. The Favorite tells the story of Sarah and Abigail and their competition for the ear of Queen Anne. While the idea of this story is based on real events, everything else in the story is changed for theatrical presentation. It shows, too. This is a wonderfully shot movie frequently using the camera to put you in the minds of the character, only to have those same characters reveal themselves not to be who you thought. Rachel Weisz, Olivia Colman, and Emma Stone give amazing performances. A great movie that feels like they just ran out of ideas for the ending, so they just ended it where they were. Still a worthy contender. Since we're on visual storytelling, Roma is a prime example of this. The movie is nothing more than a year, 1970 to 1971, in the life of a maid in Mexico. Yet, through clever writing and filmmaking, it becomes an enthralling experience. The simple black and white foreign language Netflix movie is easily one of the best of the year. Alfonso Cuaron once again proves he is a master of his craft. Vice is fine. All right, aspects of it are brilliant. We're also offering an extraordinary rendition where suspects are abducted without record on foreign soil and taken to foreign prisons in countries that still torture. Oh, that sounds delicious. Most significantly, Christian Bale's performance as Dick Cheney. Also, Amy Adams provides an amazing performance. Sam Rockwell is good, but in a very minor role. Rather surprising he got a nomination. The movie's story jumps around without any clear rhyme or reason. But when it's clever, it's some of the best moments of film in the year. Nevertheless, it's hardly best picture material, though. And last, but certainly not least, is Black Panther, the first ever superhero movie to get the best picture nod. While the film is fantastic, it feels bizarre to give it the nomination when films like The Dark Knight and Spider-Man 2 very much deserve the honor, but still came out in the wrong year. Still, one film has to break through the barrier for the others to be considered, and Black Panther is a well-crafted piece, wonderfully directed by Ryan Coogler, who sadly didn't get the nomination. That leaves us with The Star is Born, a movie I have yet to see. A Star is Born is reportedly very good despite the completely boring and generic ads. Almost every single person has told me they liked the way I sounded but that they didn't like the way I look. I think you're beautiful. Lady Gaga made history by being the first person nominated for Best Actress and Best Original Song in the same year. Still, with the greatness in these nominations, I do find myself wishing that Avengers Infinity War could have gotten more love and Annihilation and Overlord could have gotten any. Still, it is what it is. Perhaps the nomination of Black Panther is a push in the right direction for the Academy to recognize movies besides the typical fare. And although I like or love most movies on this list, by and large, these are the kinds of films that typically scream Oscar bait. Hey, if you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. And if you really love this video, consider visiting my Patreon page. 